So let's talk about these efforts and whether or not there might be some major changes in what these pro-democracy groups are capable of accomplishing these days and what this all could mean. Let's go to New York where attorney and author Ava Gollinger is. Eva, I know this is a subject you know quite a bit about. Groups include the International Republican Institute, the National Democratic Institute, the National Endowment for Democracy, groups that do a lot to sort of, you know, stir the pot internationally in favor of the U.S. government, even if it doesn't favor the majority of the people in some of these other countries. I want to get your take. What do you think is the most important thing to consider about these groups? Well, first of all, this is a huge business. I mean, democracy promotion has has become one of the largest money-making uh, businesses now around the world for those involved in promoting U.S. agenda in all kinds of different ways. I mean, the, the State Department and U.S. AIDS budget for this annually is well over $30 billion. National Endowment for Democracy gets over $100 million for its operations. Then that money is then channeled into smaller NGOs in different countries around the world. They operate in over 70 countries around the world. Um, the same goes for State Department's own democracy fund, which is also over $100 million. And then, the, this, uh, then again, this is trickling down into NGOs in different countries that use the facade of being a non-governmental organization, allegedly working to promote their citizens' rights in different areas and sectors of their society. But in the end, it all comes back to one source. They're all getting funded from the U.S. government, and they're getting funded precisely to promote U.S. agenda. So, you know, the, the groups may take on different um, different issues and may appear to be working in the interests of their own citizens in their own country, but in the end, they're following orders from Washington. And when we talk about promoting this U.S. agenda, uh, let's take a look now at what's going on in Egypt. Uh, I don't think that we can downplay how big of a deal uh, this is. You know, what, what we're seeing right now, members of these groups actually taking refuge at the U.S. Embassy in Cairo. I think this is unprecedented, and I want to ask what you think this means. I mean, did these people who work for these groups, do you think they did something that was just over the top that Egypt's military found to be horrible, or, or is something else going on here? Well, there's a suspicion in, in almost every country around the world where these types of organizations are operating for many reasons, some coming from those governments because they're aware of the funding, the foreign funding they're receiving, particularly from the U.S. government, although it's not just exclusively from the United States. The U.S. has also uh, uh, forged different agreements with some European foundations and Canadian foundations as well to channel funding through them so that it, it doesn't always have U.S. fingerprints all over it, although it has the same agenda. But um, it's actually it may be unprecedented what's happening in this sense in Egypt, whereas where the groups are being targeted and they haven't been uh, directly attacked and they're taking refuge in the U.S. Embassy. But it's not unprecedented in the sense that over the past two years, several um, U.S. democracy and NGO workers, in, particularly for U.S. aid and their subcontractors in Afghanistan, have been targeted and have actually been killed. And they've been accused of, of being basically CIA operatives um, at the same time. I mean, they, they have been working as subcontractors, particularly for a U.S. AID contractor by the name of Development Alternatives, Inc., which is one of these multi-million dollar uh, contractors for the U.S. government working in this area of democracy promotion. I mean, they're basically like the Blackwater of, you know, U.S. security contractors, but they're doing the same thing, promoting regime change or promoting U.S. agenda, just under a different cover and with, with different sort of um, objectives or appearance, as it may seem. But no, I mean, I think that this is going to be reoccurring. It's happened also in Venezuela, where they've become targets of, um, you know, those that know that they're, that these organizations are not promoting the agenda of the Venezuelan people. They're promoting a foreign agenda, and so therefore they should answer to the laws of that country for what they're doing. And it seems to me that despite these clear associations with certain heavy hitters in Washington, a lot of people do see this, these groups as independent. And yet, um, if you take a look at, you know, the IRI, John McCain and Lindsey Graham are both on its board of directors. So just real quick, Eva, uh, talk about these relationships and how they've really uh, had a hand in shaping actual policies. 
Well, it's outrageous for the International Republican Institute to claim that they're somehow independent. They're also fully funded by the State Department, by USAID, by National Endowment for Democracy, and by Congress. And they represent the interests of the Republican Party in abroad, in countries around the world. The same with NDI, which is the National Democratic Institute. This is, these are organizations that were formed at the same time as the National Endowment for Democracy in 1983-1984, with that goal precisely of promoting U.S. US agenda, particularly political agenda, in countries abroad. So, I mean, if you look at who they are, who sits on their boards, who's managing their operations, um, you'll see that, I mean, these are the high-level players of the political and economic elite of the United States government. There's no question about it.